One day, on a busy street during rush hour, the street was filled with people and vehicles, all trying to go at the same time. The sheer number of them combined with the limited space available created a traffic jam, making it difficult for everyone to get where they needed to go. This resulted in delays for everyone and a lot of frustration as people had to wait for the jam to clear up before they could continue. This problem is called the thundering herd problem. Today, we're going to explore the thundering herd problem that can occur in distributed systems like Kubernetes. But before we dive into that, let's first take a moment to understand what a distributed system is. A distributed system is a network of computers that cooperate to bring about a shared outcome. These systems are used in a variety of contexts, such as in cloud computing, where multiple servers work together to provide powerful resources and services to their users. Now, imagine that you have a distributed system with a ton of worker nodes, each of them responsible for performing a different task. Let's say that one of these nodes took a break for some reason, maybe there was a hardware failure or a software bug caused the node to crash. In any case, when a node goes down, it's common for the other nodes in the system to try and check in with the failed node in order to see if it's still up and running. This is usually done by sending a simple ping request to the failed node. The problem is that if there are a large number of nodes, they all try to ping the failed node at the same time. Obviously, this can create a huge amount of traffic on the network. This is exactly what we call thundering herd. A stampede of nodes all trying to access the failed node at once. This is where real problems start to occur. For one, it can create a bottleneck on the network, causing delays and slower performance for other tasks. It can also put a strain on the failed node, potentially causing it to crash even further. In reality, there are different approaches to dealing with this. One way is to use a technique known as backoff. With backoff, the nodes in the system will wait a certain amount of time before trying to ping the failed node again. This helps to spread out the requests and reduce the strain on the network. Another possible approach is to use a load balancer. A load balancer is a device that sits in front of the worker nodes and distributes incoming requests evenly among them. This helps to prevent a single node from becoming overloaded with requests. There are also a number of other solutions to the thundering herd problem, such as using a central authority to coordinate the nodes, or implementing a system for nodes to communicate with each other and determine which ones are still up and running. Kubernetes deals with this problem by using a combination of different strategies including readiness probes, resource quality of service, service load balancers, and its built-in horizontal pod autoscaler. Overall, Kubernetes monitors health, detects failure, cut off unhealthy resources, distributes workload, and gives users control over the limits in time, retries, and capacity of workloads. As a Kubernetes administrator, it's important to understand these common tools that Kubernetes provides to its users. This was 5 Minutes Kubernetes, a series of short but informative videos about Kubernetes, Docker, and distributed systems. Don't forget to subscribe and share this episode with your friends to show your support. Join us on fawn.dev join.